Over here, you'll be learning about the Hoffman elimination. As I would suggest, in this case, you must begin with an amine, and after that, you will form an alkene. Now, let's understand the chemistry behind this Hoffman elimination. So, in this case, I'm showing you an asymmetrical amine here that's primary. Now, in the first step, normally they spam excess methyl iodide, and this is a nucleophilic substitution because we are using a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen here and to kick out the iodide. And if you add excess, it means that after that, we'll form a quaternary ammonium salt. As you can see here, we have N plus, four bonds around it. Now, the subsequent step is very interesting. We'll be adding silver oxide in the presence of water and some heat. So this whole entity acts as a base. What does the base do? A base pick up H plus, or hydrogen. Now, if you look at this structure here, and there are two potential sites in which this H could come off. The one that's in green, and the two that is in blue. Now, the one that is in green, you see three of the same identical ones. The one that's in blue, you have two of them. It is not about how many of them there are in the environment, but you see later on. If I'm going to pick up the green one, what happens is the base lone pair will come and grab this. One of them is fine. This bond will break. We'll go here and eject the amine in this case. See, this bond is going to break. And what I have here will be shown an alkene. Previously from here, now you see there's a double bond because you received the electron density coming from this original bond here, and this part is being cut loose. So we will get the NME3. ME stands for methyl group, there's a CH3. Now suppose we take the base and attack this hydrogen. So following the trail of the blue, right? So this bond will break, form the pi bond here, and again cut loose this part, reforming the neutral nitrogen. What we have here is A double bond here. And of course, you also have the NME3. Now, how do we name this? 2, 4, 6. So the top one, we have a 1 hexene. And the bottom one, 2, 4, 6. They are isomer. This is 2 hexene. In the research lab, we have tried this experiment many times, and we find that the major product from this reaction is always one hexene. And this is minor, or sometimes we don't even get it. So what's really happening is, you have to analyze. You have learned that if you have a choice, we prefer to form the more substituted alkene, because it's more stable due to hyperconjugation. Remember? We talk about okay, and alkyl halide, and let me add a base here. E two reaction, all right. It will prefer to form the pi bond here so that I can get a more substituted alkene, more stable. Rather than you take up from here to get this alkene that's di substituted, this is not good. So we prefer this. But by observation for this Hoffman reaction, we realize that it prefer to form the less substituted alkene. There must be a reason. And the reason is the steric effect. You can tell. It must be the steric effect coming from here that these three H's are more exposed. They are not hindered by any electron cloud, so the base can go in and pick it up and form the product. Whereas the two blue ones here, they are being blocked somewhat by 
this alkyl group, Bay Electron Cloud, there's a long chain that can hinder the way of the incoming base. So that's the reason why it does not like to pick up this blue hydrogen and hence you do not like to form this minor 2 hexene. So in this case, this illustrates that you should always consider the steric against the electronic effect. Electronic meaning the more stable alkene here, which is the more substituted. And we can prove that in this case, for the Hoffman elimination, this steric will win.